Hey everyone, Chloe here and welcome back to this feminine platform and welcome back to this womanhood space. And if you are a new subscriber to this channel, hello and welcome. So everyone's been making a big deal about actress Vivica A. Fox's most recent public admission that at the age of 60 that she is now taking boyfriend applications and that she is now on the hunt for a partner and a husband after being interviewed on the Hoda and Jenna show while promoting her latest film. Now, of course, the Manosphere and their very circular, repetitive, and very boring one-trick pony reactions of punching down on aging women, and by association, unmarried women, uh, and this also includes the Pick Me Boots channels and their internalized misogyny as well, but they are entitled to their freedom of speech. And at this point, the bread and butter of their punching down is to be expected. But we all know that ageism and that humiliating, humbling, or devaluing women has become such a fear-inducing talking point for dusty men of all races and nationalities who have built entire brands off of bashing women. But if that is what these low-value men are choosing to do with their masculinity, or their lack thereof, then that is on them. Because when all is quiet, they are the ones who are going to have to look themselves in the mirror every night. Now, this platform was started to help women understand the importance of navigating their femininity, hypergamy, dating, the 15-year window, and marriage. Because these were not the upfront and necessary conversations that women, particularly black women, were having as black women have always been groomed to run themselves ragged and black women have always been groomed to be the face of strength at the expense of their softness and their femininity. And gratefully, black women are now more than ever aware of the necessity of having soft power and the necessity of understanding the role of healthy femininity and healthy masculinity when it comes to provision, protection, and interdependence. And because Vivica, who represents a generation of maturing black women who are from a completely different era of womanhood, more than likely for Vivica, conversations on dating, marriage, and having a family were never front and centered, as this is not Vivica's first time publicly admitting that she's single. As she has expressed in the past, having many deep regrets about not having her own biological children. But before I exactly get into how Vivica should respond to questions about her dating life moving forward and my thoughts on the men who love to punch down on women because of aging, here is the conversation that had everyone in a tizzy and I will be back with the rest of my very important commentary. About what, uh, what else you're wanting? Are you dating? Yeah. How's it going? I, I'm wanting to date. Yeah. I just, yeah. it's limited resources out there, right? <laughs> yes. Because I'm not getting on an app. I just, because no, I, you're just not a good I'm old fashioned. I'm like, yeah. I need to meet you and sparks yeah. happen yeah. and stuff like that because I just believe people make up stories yeah. saying who and what yeah, they are. Exactly. And what are you so, looking for at this stage, this point? A partner. Yeah. And I'm, when I say a partner, I want someone that's going to be fun, dated yeah. by who and what I am. Yeah. yeah. Um, that likes to travel. Yeah. Going to let me go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I feel like you just spoke it into existence. I now. hope so, girlfriend. I feel like you so just spoke. You got, and I'm taking applications. Oh, so you know, you got I, a friend. Okay, I'm okay. Good. We'll keep. We'll be all. We'll and be I don't discriminate. Hunt. He can be. Yeah, I'm not against different nationalities. <laughs> then you know that too. Okay. <laughs> gonna Vivica. stick around. <laughs> so sadly, when an older woman is pressed about her dating life, automatically by internet translation, she is a spinster a cat lady, a dog mom, an auntie. And by internet translation, if you are a woman who is single, it now means that you are a walking infomercial for desperation. And unfortunately, it is a powerful narrative that tends to stick no matter how much women try to fight this narrative back. So in regards to Vivica, she absolutely does not deserve to be abused or humiliated. But in her particular case, she did get into it with Kevin Samuels several times while he was alive. And she also casually celebrated his death. Healthy. This man was a, a hypocrite. In my honest opinion, he really was. I didn't find anything about him to be healing. He insulted uh, African-American women on a consistent basis. Uh, one of his last statements that uh, he said was that if you're over 38 and you haven't married or something like that, that you're no good and disposable. Um, to me, it was a shock jock. And, you know, I, I hope this is teaching folks a lesson about the karma that you put out the negativity that you put out in the world, that when karma comes knocking at your door, 
she might not be so kind. So, you know, the fact that he uh, killed over real quick and was uh, supposedly with a woman that we don't know, yet know the nationality. Um, rest in peace. So in her case, of course, his lackeys were going to swarm her with buckets of so-called humbling. Now, if I were her PR, I would highly advise Vivica against these kinds of public personal questions because women now have to realize just how much their lack of a romantic relationship will be served and carved up for content by these endless grifters that are making channels every hour on the hour because now there will be a permanent spotlight on her singleness which will now be amplified and weaponized for up and down left and right humiliation because unfortunately nothing and I mean nothing spreads faster than misery bad news and how terrible it is for a woman of any age to be single unfortunately weaponizing a woman's singleness has become a bona fide toxic blood sport without let up and I feel deep compassion for the women who are not aware of how these cornering conversations about their love lives can set them up for amplified public embarrassment so learning how to read the room the PR room for celebrities like Vivica moving forward is key in keeping your romantic life private but not a secret now as for Vivica and her options hiring a matchmaker can always be an option she can also network in her circles because she is a celebrity and cannot move in the same way when it comes to romance as she will typically be more susceptible to scammers if she even dare go pedestrian she says that she's open to all races of men so perhaps an accomplished retiree in his 70s and if she wants to go younger she can always go the sugar mama route like Cher or Madonna ladies what is most important to understand is that when you are doing the self-love work single will never equal unhappy to my married listeners when you are doing the self-love work you will always be your own best friend and if your marriage is blessed your husband will be your protector, your provider, and a trusted leader that you can depend upon because that is the hypergamous ideal. So in other words, marriage doesn't automatically mean happy and single don't automatically mean miserable. Ladies, it is not a competition because we all know that women can be miserable single and that women can be miserable married. But in both cases, the self-love work must be done. Now, ladies of any age, if someone were to ask you if you're looking for a husband, your response should be, I am waiting for a husband to find me. Because technically, a woman's job, if she desires to be married, should be preparing herself to be a wife, not looking for a husband. A woman looking for a husband, and I put looking in quotes, implies chasing and or low-key, high-key desperation. And more importantly, a lack of preparedness as most women are not mentally, spiritually, emotionally, or physically preparing themselves to be wives and the same goes for husbands and therefore are not attracting husband or wife material, but instead are attracting weirdos, bozos, and SEX fiends who are always on a hunt for desperate low hanging fruit. Another response that you can use to being single is that a woman can keep it both feminine and mysterious by simply saying that she's either rotationally dating or that she's simply enjoying her life. No need to overthink it and no need to explain it any further than that. Because unfortunately, if you don't have a prepared response for being single, you will be thrown a curveball that will put you in a position of defensive posturing and having to unnecessarily explain your singleness, which by default means having to explain your worth, which a woman should never ever have to do. Now, what I'm about to say is definitely going to ruffle some feathers, but what the manosphere has not spiritually learned yet is that aging is a blessing. So although Vivica Fox will be turning 60 this year, what matters most whether married or not, is that she is still here. Mr. Kevin Samuels, with all due respect and no disrespect, and God bless the dead, is gone, gone. As human beings, we all have been given tremendous gifts. And as a man, you have been given the sacred gift of masculinity. And that is a gift that you were entrusted with that should be respected and honored. The gift of being able to provide to protect and to profess and to lead was not given to you to malign women or to punch down on women. But unfortunately for Mr. Kevin Samuels 
and men like him. And I say this with the utmost respect to his family. But Mr. Samuel's brand before he left this earth, and we're all leaving this earth, was branded on an overwhelming amount of negativity. He spoke unkindness, and in many instances, he spoke arrogance. And instead of using the gift of his masculinity to protect, he instead chose the bulk of his leadership and his influencing power to punch down on women, particularly black women. And like Andrew Tatum, he chose to punch down on the futures of aging women as their brands. And look where it got to both of them. Sadly, Kevin lost his life in disgrace, no matter how much the manosphere tries to clean up the narrative. So we have to be very careful with how we use our gifts, because as a man, you will always be at your best when you are a builder over being a destroyer. And as a woman, you will always be at your best when you are a lover over being a fighter. And this also needs to be said, but Kevin's death and the continuing downfall of those who choose to abuse, use chaos and negativity as a full out brand was a very powerful spiritual lesson for me to learn as an influencer. The facts are you may kiki and laugh now at the fact that women age or at the misfortunes or the failures of others. But the ancestors are very patient. They will give you enough rope to hang yourself and they will always give you the opportunity to course correct with balance. But when you continue to use your gifts to cause pain and suffering to others, the very vital lesson to learn is that the outcome in the end will not be good. The truth is Vivica may or may not get the relationship that she wants. I don't know this woman from a can of paint. I don't know how much internal work that she has done. And we don't know whether she's bitter or healed. But the most important point to remember is that she is still here and that she is still fully capable of living her life to the fullest, whether a partner is in the picture or not. So that is all that I have to say on this for now. Ladies, the manosphere will always be there to drag, but as long as you have breath to be your very best self, that is all that matters. So ladies and lurkers, to get this conversation started, is it over for Vivica Fox or should the manosphere and their flying monkeys kick rocks? And as always, I thank you for listening. I thank you for watching. And I thank you for sharing this video to further grow our soft power community. And please stay tuned for more videos to come. And I will catch up with you ladies and lurkers and ear hustlers in the next one. Even if it's a mistake, it belongs to you. It's yours. Own it. Yes, I did it. Throw it back in their face. And don't let them take your mistake. Your mistake, it's a valuable tool for growth and for life. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's better than to do nothing and learn nothing and not evolve. Your mistake is your greatest opportunity. And if somebody's making fun of you because you made a mistake, don't go down because of it. If you say so what to their face, they are powerless. Yes, I messed up. Tomorrow it will be another day. Next year will be another year. It is my mistake, not yours. You, you have your own. It doesn't matter where you are in life. It really doesn't. Because the great thing about life is it's always your next move. Your next move that counts. No matter where you are, you could be, look, I was dead broke. My electric bill was being shut off. And there were, obviously there were people even like worse off than I was. It doesn't matter. You could change your life if you want to. It's always your next decision. So it's up to you.